There's a case posted uh, on Twitter by Dr. Santangeli from the University of Pennsylvania as a case of CS atresia in a patient with a patent vein of Marshall. And I want to be clear that this is CS atresia with a patent vein of Marshall and not a persistent left SVC. Um, this was a previously failed implant, and because he had become aware of a persistent or a patent vein of Marshall, he was able to successfully implant. So what's going on here? We well, can see here's the lead in the coronary sinus, and it goes up uh, a patent vein of Marshall and then across to the to the can which is on the right side. So the anatomy in this case is that there's CS atresia and that the blood flow goes instead of out into the right atrium it goes up the uh, patent vein of Marshall and into the left subclavian. There's another version of CS atresia and patent vein of Marshall where the blood return is both to the left atrium and to the left subclavian. In this case, there's a risk of systemic embolization if clot forms uh, in the coronary sinus. Another variant of this anatomy is when you have uh, the vein of Marshall turning into the remnant of the vein of Marshall with no connection to the left subclavian and the majority of the blood flow opens into the left atrium. And in this case, uh, there isn't any way uh, to get access to the coronary sinus. Finally, as we mentioned before, this is the case that we're talking about is not a persistent left SVC. Persistent left SVC, the blood flow from the left subclavian enters uh, the coronary sinus uh, right at Vucin's valve, and thus the coronary sinus os is markedly dilated rather than atretic. Um, the coronary sinus below Vucin's valve, where the persistent left SVC enters, is dilated, but importantly, the coronary sinus above Vucin's valve is normal size. Technically, this part is called the great cardiac vein. So what would an implant look like in this situation? This is a case uh, where we are unable to locate the coronary sinus using the anatomic approach uh, and contrast. And so recognizing that such a thing exists, we looked uh, at the clavicular sternal junction, uh, found the patent vein of Marshall, determined that the majority of the blood flow uh, returned to the left subclavian and very little of any blood flow to the left atrium and very little blood flow if any to the right atrium so we felt it was safe to implant down this persistent or this this patent vein of Marshall and place the LV lead as illustrated here um, because the um, patent vein of Marshall enters the coronary sinus at, at its midsection, uh, implanting these can be tricky because half of the targets can be above uh, the where the patent vein of Marshall enters uh, the coronary sinus. However, you really don't have any option. Um, and so when you're finished, you want to make sure that you put lots of slack, as much slack as possible, uh, into the into the lead uh, to allow for respiratory variation. Uh, if, you, if you're having trouble finding a patent vein of Marshall, you can use levophase CS phonography as illustrated here. Um, and here we see the, the patent vein of Marshall heading uh, towards the left subclavian. I hope this is helpful. It's very nice to know these things uh, when you're doing a difficult implant.